Hello, welcome to the show. Now you know that a lot of the guests I have on here, and myself included, uh, very much believe in life after death. My guest today, Michael Roll, actually goes several steps further than that because Michael says that the case for life after death can be proved scientifically. Hello, Michael. Hello, Daniel. Thanks for coming. Thanks for inviting me. Now, what got you into this? Because you, you are very, very focused on this, and I've talked to you a couple of times, and you are totally committed to this. I, I was very lucky because I was born into it. My mother just showed me these books we're going to hold up to the camera now and again here, um, proving survival after death. And when I say the proof of survival, I mean repeatable experiments under laboratory conditions right. over and over again by top scientists. And uh, my mother showed me these books when I was well, right from word go sort of thing. And uh, at, at the age of 16, I read my first book that she showed me. And I suddenly realized that if these great scientists like Sir William Crookes and Sir Oliver Lodge and John Logie Baird, the pioneers mm. of radio and television, right, yeah. hadn't broken through, there's no point in a 16-year-old having a go. So, right. so I went into the commercial world for 25 years. But the only reason they didn't break through were these experiments that actually proved survival mm -hmm. over 100 years ago. Um, was because they didn't have the mathematics to back up the experiment. Right, and you, every, have, to, you have to have that. Every experiment must have a mathematical theory really to crash through, and the analogy is the world being round. Mm -hmm. Do you know, Jenny, the Greeks actually proved the world was round 2,300 years ago by mathematics. But nobody believed them. Well, they didn't have the experiment. Right. In 1522, <laughs> it happened. Magellan right. sailed round the world, and so you know what happened after that. It was the end of the flat earthers. Yes. Everybody accepted the world was round because the, the, the experiment of Magellan matched up with the Greeks' mathematics. It's exactly the same now with survival after death. It didn't break through 100 years ago when these scientists did these repeatable experiments because they didn't have the mathematical theory. Mm -hmm. the, the critics said to Sir William Crookes, who carried out these experiments, um, all right, you've proved survival because people are fully materialising in your laboratory right. where all five senses are working. <laughs> and he could do these re repeatable experiments over and over again. And they said, that, right, where is the next world? Where are these people materialising from? And Sir William Crookes could not write the equations on the blackboard to satisfy that answer. Right. But no, he I says, I'll so. tell you what I think it is, because Sir William Crookes was the pioneer of television. There would be no television if it wasn't for Sir William Crookes. He invented the cathode ray tube. Oh, right. And he says, I think I, I know where it is, the next world. It's another wavelength. That, um, oh, like television. Right, television or radio right. are all operating in the same space. Mm -hmm. So these people who are materialising at these experiments, proving survival, and our loved ones who are dead, and us who are going to die, go into another wavelength. And sometimes you get interference from these other wavelengths, and that's when our, our ancestors thought they were angels, devils, gods, or God. We now know they're people, exactly the same as, as we are. And we can now write the equations on the blackboard, because I'm dealing with the Bath scientist, Ronald Pearson, and he's the chap who's discovered the next world. And do, do these people, if they're like real people like us, do they age? They have different laws of physics. You, ah. you, you, <coughs> we are locked into our laws of physics on, on Earth. Right. And, but when they materialise, we fire in all the questions, like, as you can imagine, like a machine gun. Yeah. But the answers to the, uh, to the questions, um, you can't take that as proof. We'll have to wait until we get into the next world to find out right. what they say is right. I'll tell you what the hearsay is, if you want me to, as long as the scientists watching this programme uh, don't think I'm saying this is definite, just because right, they've told this is us just so. What, what, yeah. what I'm pushing is told. we have the proof of survival, and now we've got the mathematics then it's up to everybody now to check out what I'm saying. Right. And we do that by um, sending for my pamphlet, which I give out free of charge, so there's, right. there's no rip-off here. And then they can do, I just put the references, all these su suppressed books, people can check it out for themselves. And if they don't like the idea of immediately surviving death and being reunited with their loved ones, they can always go back to what they thought before this information reached them. Mm. When you're dead, you're dead as put forward by orthodox science across every discipline, including psychology and philosophy, yes. as taught in our universities, or the other one is resting in peace in the ground waiting for Judgment Day. The yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, think. people can take what they like, can't they? And they can, they yeah. can believe what they like. But they haven't had access to this. So long as this. they have the evidence put in front of them. But they so haven't they had can, access to this exactly. unless they tune on to so the Jenny can, Smedley show. They can judge for themselves. <laughs> because I'm not allowed, or I haven't been allowed so far on ter other terrestrial television right. to put this across. One of my questions of personal interest is, have you discovered anything about reincarnation while you've been doing this? 
I, I took part in one of these experiments because um, now, now the mathematics came through. I knew we had to repeat these early experiments mm. of Sir William Crookes because yes. when you hold up the, uh, that photograph of Sir William Crookes took there, um, he only had the infrared um, uh, camera. That right. It had only just been invented, the infrared camera. Can you see it there? And he took about 40 of these photographs and somebody from the next world fully materialised in his laboratory. So this lady we can see... That's right, is Katie King, who fully materialised. Right. And that, that gentleman with him is a top surgeon who, who took uh, pulse rates and everything and compared them what? to the medium. He could actually touch her? Oh, yes. It, they've got to be as solid and as natural as we are. And, and I've, I knew the mathematics had come through about 20 years ago. So what I did, I scoured the... Uh, magazines looking for another one of these materialization mediums to come on the scene. Right. Because like mental mediums, um, uh, only your one sense is working, your hearing. Mm -hmm. But with a materialization experiment, all five senses are working. Mm. And when they materialize, Jenny, they're as solid as you and me. And you've, no had, difference you've actually at all. been there? I've, yes, I scoured the papers looking for another one of these mediums, and I came across one in 1983, um, a great medium called uh, Rita Gould. And she was far superior to any physical medium that's ever gone before. Far superior to the ones that um, Sir William Crookes worked with and, and Professor Charles Richet. As many as six recently deceased people were fully materialising in a room as, about as big as this and walking around the room God. and talking to us. We could go up and touch them. It's mind-blowing. Same thing happened <laughs> in the past. Nothing happened yesterday in the laws of physics. It doesn't happen today. Our ancestors witnessed what we're witnessing, the story of Jesus materializing in front of his disciples. He's the 17th savior God known to historians. All previous 16 have the same story. So they thought something supernatural had happened. They made them into angels, devils, gods, or Big Daddy God himself. Like you would. Understandably. Mm. When you take part like I have in these experiments, you can understand our ancestors thought something supernatural had happened. But all that uh, you've got to do is find one of these mediums, and I did. I, I came across... So did you ask about reincarnation? Yes. I sat next to somebody who fully materialised. <laughs> it's just, you know, you I just can't, uh, you can't grasp it. I know. It. This is why it's been <laughs> suppressed, because it's revolutionary. Every textbook in the world will have to be rewritten. Every scientific textbook will have to be rewritten. You see, this is why it's been hushed up. But every, all the experts in the subject know what I'm saying is true. And I sat next to this, ch this chap who materialised, the son of um, Sir Oliver Lodge, Raymond Lodge. And we checked him out. We didn't just take it that he said, I'm a Raymond Lodge. We, we checked with his sister, who was still alive. And, and how, how... And, and I asked, hey, we've better go and do the reincarnation oh, yeah, one first. Get that bit we've better get there. <laughs> and I said to Raymond, I said, look, let's get this straight about reincarnation, because some, through mental mediumship, some mediums are saying, oh, yes, we have to keep coming back to Earth time and time again mm -hmm. uh, and to learn lessons and develop our characters. And others saying, no, we don't have to keep coming back. And this chap from the next world says, Mike, I don't... He caught hold of my wrist and says, Mike, I don't know. You don't die and well, suddenly get he wouldn't. the secrets unless, of the universe, Unless he came see. back, he wouldn't know, would he? But can't you see the importance of what I'm doing here? We're trying to get through to people that we survive. It's Let's uh, worry about coming back after we've yeah. got... Everybody in the world knows that we survive. That and when, they don't know that. When these see. people materialise, was it like a, a gradual thing? I think the good analogy is a beam me up Scotty, if you've seen Star Trek. Right. Um, yeah. th th there's nobody there one minute, and somehow or other the scientists in the etheric world are able to lower the subatomic vibrations and to stick them or teleport them if you like from their wavelength into our wavelength for a few hours. And why do they need a, need a medium? Right, that's the most important question of all, mm. it really is. Because otherwise they could just pop them up all over the yeah. place and everybody well, would see them, wouldn't it's they? It's so simple the answer to that question. 